Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond This Games. In this video we are going to be looking at the basic building block of video game AI, which is the IF statement. Now, if you've been coding for very long, you've probably run across this and used it yourself. If you have used the if statement not on your player character, then you have actually done some video game AI. Whether it be simple or pretty complex, you've done some. But if you haven't, this is going to be a great place to start. And if you have, hopefully I can teach you something new here. This is using ifs to, to simulate artificial intelligence, which I guess is artificial intelligence. Uh, so let me show you what we're going to make. We have our player and our enemy. When the player turns yellow, he is going to move towards him. When the player turns white, he is going to jump back to his original spot. And when the player turns aqua, we're going to display some text. Okay, So those are our three different states that we are going to program using the if code. Now, let's jump into it first by creating the sprites that we're going to need. So we're going to name this one SPR player. We're going to come in here, fill this in, do a white oval, and uh, fill that in with white, nice and simple. I'm going to create a new sprite called SPR enemy, and this one is just going to be a red square. Let's move the workspace right there, perfect. Now we have those two, and the next we're going to do is create an object called OBJ player. And we don't actually need to assign it a sprite because I'll show you why in just a second. We're going to add a draw event. And inside of here, we are going to use the function draw sprite ext, which stands for extended. And that gives us more options that you can see down here as to the sprite we actually want to be drawing. We are going to change the color of the sprite, which you need to use a better function for, or you'd have different sub images inside of your sprite. This way is actually a little more simple and it works for what we want to do with our enemy if logic. So we're just going to say the sprite we want to draw is SPR player. The sub image is zero. X is its own X. Same for the Y. X and Y scales are both one. We don't want it larger or smaller than what it already is. Rotation is zero for default. And the color is going to be a variable that we create called my color. We'll make that in just a second. And alpha will be one, which is fully visible, so not transparent at all. Now, at a create event, uh, if we didn't define my color like we're about to do, we'd get an error that says the variable has not been set yet. And if you get that, then you need to make sure that you have spelled it correctly in here where you initiated it and that uh, it's actually been given a value. So my color, we're going to start out with C white. And what we want to do is come in and we're going to do key pressed down to letters. We're going to hit A and we're going to change my color equal to C aqua. And we're going to add two more. So key pressed, letter, uh, where's that Y at? Oh man, I can't see. So we're going to do W first. <laughs> That's right beneath that. So we're going to change my color equal to C white. And another way you can do this is actually duplicate this event and then it will ask you if you want it to change at all. So we can change it to white and it'll actually duplicate everything in here. So we can just change this to C yellow. And then we're going to save, we're going to open up our room and drag the player object inside and run it. And you will see that the player is there. And if I press Y, it changes the color. A, W, they all work perfectly. Awesome. So let's create a new object. Press F12 so we can actually see what we're doing here. Name it OBJ enemy. And now we are going to work on some of the logic. We're going to add a step event because we want the logic to be running every single frame of the game so that it makes sure that it's making the best decision with the most information possible. And we're going to type if. Now an if statement, just like in real world, is an evaluation of information. And if the information is true, we act one way. If it's false, we act another. The 
a very simple and easy way to look at this is if it is raining, take an umbrella. You have this true or false statement. It says, if it's raining, do something. If it's not, you're going to do something different because the weather is different. You are going to react differently. And that's exactly what this if statement is. We get to put whatever we want inside of it and we can make it as small with one condition or as large as you want. The larger it gets, the more unwieldy it becomes because it's harder to read and manage if anything goes wrong with it. So if statements are great as long as they don't become too terribly complex. So let's write one right now. We're going to say if obj player dot my color is equal to c white, which is the default color, uh, we're going to say x equals x start and y equals y start. That means that we're going to put the enemy back where he spawned in on the level. Now we're going to type else if, and before you get too confused, else if is a continuation of this if statement. It is saying that only one of these if statements is going to fire. If this is true, then nothing else that comes down here that is in an else if is going to trigger. If this one is false, it will then check the next one and so on and so forth until it finds one that is true. If we take out that else, then, then both of these ifs could potentially fire if the information was true inside of them. We only want the enemy to be doing one thing at a time, so I'm using the else if condition. So, else if obj player dot my color is equal to c yellow and if it is then we are going to use the function move towards point which just takes the current object that is calling that function and moves it towards a certain location we are going to say that location is obj player dot x and obj player dot y with a speed of one so let's assign it a sprite throw it into the room and run our game. When we change to yellow, the enemy is now going to move straight at us. If we change to white, it jumps right on back. So that's great. That's two simple if statements, but something is actually happening. The enemy is reacting to us. You can make these more complex the more data that you feed the AI systems that you have. For example, if this enemy was a guard, then you can have it have vision. You could have it know if the enemy has recently stolen anything, and if it has, then it should chase after the player. If it hasn't, if the player is in good standing by whatever world order it is, then he doesn't get chased. The more information that you feed an AI system, the smarter decisions that it can make. Now, what I want to do is make one more if statement in here to show you that this code works, but it can get a little difficult to handle the more if statements you have. So I'm going to add in one more if statement. We're going to check for player color is equal to C aqua. Now, if it is, what we want to do is draw some text on the screen. We could put this whole if statement inside of the draw event proper, but I want to keep them all together so that you can see the logic and then see what we have to do to maintain all of these to work properly. So we're going to add the draw event. We're also going to add a create event. And inside of the create event, we're going to add a variable, okay? This variable is going to be called time to talk. We're going to set it to false. And then inside of the step event, we're going to set time to talk equal to true, because now we want to display text. Then inside of the draw event, we're going to say draw self first, otherwise you're going to have issues. And then we're going to say draw text put it on ourselves, just on X and Y, and we'll write hello player. Now, if we run this, it's going to work kind of, right? Um, first off, it's drawing it all the time. 
And that is a problem because we only want to do it when it's aqua. So we need to say if time to talk is equal to true, then we want this to run. Okay. Now when we do this, we've got our enemy. So if I press A, he is displaying text. Now this is when it starts to break down. If I press Y, he moves towards me, but he is still displaying text. If I press W, he is still displaying text. And that is because this variable that got set to true didn't get unset at any point. Now, let me show you one way that you can handle this, and then maybe you'll start to see why too many if statements can become unwieldy. So we have the time to talk is equal to true, but we need it to be false at any other time that it is not aqua. So what we can do is come into everything that is not aqua and set it to false. Now, if we run it, it'll work properly. It's only going to display that text when it's, when it's aqua. But why is this moving and displaying text? That's two different colors, isn't it? Well, it's not. Because this function, kind of tricky, sets the speed of the enemy, sets the speed of the object, and nowhere have we actually told it to reset that speed. When we change it to yellow, the speed becomes one, and when we change it to white, we are actually physically changing, or I guess digitally changing, the x and y coordinates, but we have not slowed the speed down. That means we need to come in here and say speed equals zero, and inside of here, speed equals zero. And now, each of those is going to do exactly what we expect. If I press A, it displays text. If I press Y, it moves toward me. If I press A, it stops and displays text. If I press W, it goes back to here. So you can see here that even with just three if statements, we have to have a way of counter, countering what the logic has told it to do in other parts of the if statement. This if says it to move. Now we need all of the other ones to say not to move anymore. The more if statements you add, the more of these caveats you have to have inside of each and every if statement. Now, obviously this is not the best way to actually code video game AI. If it is really simple, this is okay. If this was all I had for that, it wouldn't be worth uh, creating scripts and a state machine and anything else that becomes more complicated. If you can accomplish your AI, simply do it. More complex AI does not mean better AI. But if you want more complex AI, if you want your AI to have more actions to react dynamically, then you need to have more information, which involves more variables, more data that it can take in, and you need to have a lot more if statements. And when you add a lot of if statements, you add a lot of overhead, and that becomes difficult to manage, and there are better ways of doing that. So in the next video, we are going to look at a better way of doing video game AI, all right? This was the if statement, which is the basic coding block, which we will continue to use, but we will refine and make better. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you learned and enjoyed and that you can apply this to what you are building and what you are making. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I will talk to you later. Have fun making great games. And I will talk to you later. <laughs> if you'd like to support me more than just liking and subscribing to my channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon like all of the awesome people on the screen right now. They get to vote on upcoming tutorials and get one-on-one -on -one training sessions with me each month. Thank you very much, and I will talk to you later. <laughs>